Welcome to Muller Time. How you doing, Mel? Yeah, I'm doing great. What's going on? Not too much, man. Uh, <laughs> or way too much. The rain has finally slowed up here in uh, Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah, it's been a crazy couple of days. I mean, not just like rain. This has been like a monsoon. <laughs> Something we're not used to here in Los Angeles. We're yeah. not used to water coming out the sky. And I know the rest of the country is like, hey, we're got, <laughs> we're having some extreme water, uh, you know, weather right. events. But um uh, we're over here crying about the rain, and they're in sub-zero temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> I want to uh, just start off first by thanking um, our newest Patreon, Michael. Yay, Michael. Yeah, thanks for signing up, man. Uh, anyone else wants to support independent podcasters, it's at patreon.com backslash Muller Time. Helps us do this show. So how was your Super Bowl, man? Yeah, Super Bowl was super boring. Yeah. <laughs> so they're saying it was like one of the worst ever. Is that true? Yeah. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Sat there and just watched it. I was like, well, I don't think the Rams are going to pull it out. And you knew the Patriots were going to win. So you just sat there and just watched. I watched about 15 minutes. And then um, I got to say, I mean, when they did that MLK tribute mm-hmm. and knowing all the other stuff and how those owners are, right. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Right. It seemed insincere. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it did. It did totally seem insincere. And I don't think, I'm not a big enough football fan where, like, I'm sure you're a way bigger fan where you're like, hey, like, I'm going to enjoy this game. No. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not no. that big of a fan. Okay. No. I was there for the commercials, to be honest. <laughs> really was. And was not uh, disappointed. It's crazy how big the commercials have gotten. Yeah, we've gotten some great commercials on Super Bowl. Pretty soon it's going to be less football, more commercials. Yeah, I saw the uh, Washington Post had a, a big commercial. Right. What was your favorite of all the of all the ones? Uh, my favorite actually was the uh, Kia commercial with the new uh, Telluride or whatever that vehicle is. Oh, cool! Yeah, that was that was a super great commercial. I've been seeing the billboard around town. They were saying that the um, it, the teams played so bad because nobody wants to win and have to visit the White House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But let me ask you this: Aren't the Patriots like? I mean, I, I'm not that big of a full, but aren't they like full on Trump? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Full on Trump boys. Yeah. I love it. That's gross. Well, no, just Brady and the yeah. owners, and not just, the rest of them. Yeah. Like, right. none of the black players are going to go, right? Mm-mm. They're like, they're like, fuck this. I mean, who knows? They'll probably show up. Yeah. Like we'll those, see. Like those Clemson players. Right. With the, with, the, with the hot dogs and all that. Yeah, let's hope it's not McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King. <laughs> and Carl's Jr. got cut out. <laughs> well, I guess it's Hardy's back east, but they got cut out. What's up with that? I like some Carl's Jr. Car- yeah, well, he doesn't because he because of where he's from, where where Gump is from. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Trump. He doesn't like Carl's Jr. Isn't that big on the East Coast? Right. I don't even know if they have Carl's Jr. They had. It's called Hardy's. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I found out about that Clemson thing too. Apparently, none of the good players even went. Right. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. Like going to the White House is a once in a lifetime thing. Mm-hmm. And then it's like funny, these young players, like years later, 60 years later, it's like, I remember that day he was just standing there with this fucking like cold Big Mac. Right. Exactly. Now that's sad. Yeah. No, it really is. Um, Muller time is charted in uh, Sweden, New Zealand, and yeah, I think it was just Sweden and New Zealand. Wow. Last week. Yeah. We, We're going to have to learn some new languages. Yeah. Number 100 with a bullet. With a bullet. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. Thank <laughs> you guys uh, all over there for... We're going worldwide. Thank you. And um, as I've often stated, uh, should things go bad, we'd like to crash on your couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have a lot of skills. You know, like I can... I've had a lot of jobs, Mel. Yeah, I can drive a car. Whatever. So, you know, if this becomes some apocalyptic nightmare... Right, we could go to another country. Just remember the guys from Mother Time. Right, I'm quite sure I could do lift in another country. You know, on Saturday, real quick, I did um, I did a live Facebook chat with some listeners. It w- it was fun, man. Nice. Yeah, that whole like live streaming thing, like yeah, it was right. really cool. So, um, yeah. What did could, they have to say? You know, it was, I mean, I it was funny for the first eight minutes, mm-hmm. like nobody was there. Okay. And I'm just like, so I'm just talking. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on? Is this stupid? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, am I crazy? And then slowly, people started coming in. Yeah, just talk Muller. I mean. Uh, Right. Yeah, yeah. You got to come into the next one. It was fun. It was a it was a real good time. All right. So uh, tomorrow is the. No, I don't think I want to do that. Actually, um, let's yeah. just get into it. Yeah. Let's just talk about Coon Boy. 
Coon you want, Man. You want to go into it first? Yeah, okay. Let's just go right into Coon okay. Man. Everybody wants to know what we're thinking about Coon Man. Okay. So, um, yeah, Ralph Northam. Go go ahead, Mel. So, Coon Man, I find that um, his excuses are getting more and more ridiculous as it goes on. And just for some of the, not, sorry to interrupt you, um, mm-hmm. do you want to tell them just for the people who are abroad? So, here's what's happened, yeah. actually. So, Ralph Northam, who is a Democratic governor of Virginia, his medical yearbook in 1984 with his picture on there has associated pictures of him with uh, someone in blackface standing next to someone in a a Klan uniform. Right. And then in his uh, regular profile picture, you know, they have the name Coon Man because he was Coon Man. So when he was asked, you know, was that him in the pictures? At first he said, yeah, I don't know which one was me. And then right. days later, oh, no, none of them are me. I never did that. I only put on a little makeup when I was pretending to be Michael Jackson. Yeah, we're in, with this whole Trump presidency, we're in a very serious situation. And the one thing that we absolutely cannot have on top of that is Democrats doing Messing stuff. Up. We, I mean, I just, we, we don't, we re- literally don't have room to lose a governor, but we have to lose this guy. He's got to go. Yeah, no, he absolutely has to go. It's too bad that he didn't just come out and, admit it right away because i'm quite sure even though that was racist that doesn't mean he's hateful that's uh i mean that's a great point uh you know it looked like he was actually admiring michael jackson you know and admiring he probably wants to be black yeah so ralph northam on top of getting caught with this this photo then for for unknown reasons cops to a incident no one knew about no one knew about it he decided to be michael jackson I told someone I knew, he literally sounded like when the cops are talking to someone who's guilty, he was just talking too much. Right. Like, oh, he said way too much. Oh, I only put on a little bit of shoe polish. You know what happens. You know how it's hard to get off. Yeah. yeah. How would I know no, that? I, yeah, I didn't know that. How many times are you putting shoe polish on? Had no idea that was a thing. But, yeah. But thank you. Good to know that. The, like, the racism, I, there were so many things I learned. Like I was like, first of all, like my father's a doctor and I was like, Hey, did you even have, like you had a yearbook? Like I right. didn't know they had yearbooks. I didn't know they had yearbooks. And on top of that, so you had a yearbook and then the medical school thought that was cool. Right. The medical school thought that was okay. Check this out. This just came out. So I don't know if you saw it. That medical school, it's called Eastern Virginia. Right. Whatever. Did you see that they don't do yearbooks anymore? No, but I did find out though that those pictures were submitted by him. You did. Yes, he had to submit those pictures. All the medical students had to submit pictures in an envelope that was a tribute on their page. Yeah. So that tribute page to him was photos that he submitted of course. to the yearbook. Yeah, who else? So he knew those are the photos that he requested represent to represent him in 1984 in his med school yearbook. It's like I always want to remember as I go on to a, a big career in medicine – I want all my friends to remember me as the the clan guy, right? And, and the coon, guy. coon man, yeah. To remember him as Coon Man. Remember old Coon Man? He used to dress up, put on that black face, dance like Michael Jackson. That was so funny. <laughs> Imagine if that guy was your doctor, Coon Man. Well, I mean, he's probably a qualified doctor. And like I said, just because he was racist doesn't mean he was actually hateful. Well, I think that's that's a great. Uh, that's that reminds me of when. When Obama gave that speech about his grandmother, who he knew was racist but loved him, right, and he had to deal with that kind of duality, exactly. One of the best speeches I've ever, I've and ever it's heard. the same thing with Ralph Nathan. I don't believe he's hateful at all. Yeah. I just think that he admired black a little too much, a little right. too much, yeah, a little too much. And what he did was absolutely racist. And how you don't understand or know that in 1984, and you're in med school. How you don't know putting on blackface is wrong. So this this school really has a problem. They said three years ago they had to stop. This is just three years ago, like okay. 2015, or they had to stop doing yearbooks because too many students were wearing Confederate shit. <laughs> so this has been going on. This is their thing, obviously. This is their thing. They're just a bunch of racists down there just having a good old time. Good old boys having a good old time. What kind of school is this? What kind of country is this? Yeah. <laughs> Well. What kind a- of country is this? Look, at this is this is just one in probably 10,000 schools that have been caught that oh. are doing craziness like this. Yeah, yeah. 
And then uh, the only other thing I was going to say about Mr. Northam is you know he was going to moonwalk. He was about to moonwalk yeah. for sure. His wife stopped him. His wife has great hair, though. Oh, yeah. yeah that she, hair, her hair is on point. Well, I'm pretty sure she, <laughs> she um, no, she's going to stay with this guy, I guess. But Right. Why, got, why does everybody, why do all the racists look so goofy? Why do they all look like crazy? This guy has no chin. It, I got to say, like, I know it's not important what party he's in, but it does break me up that because these Republican bums, where Steve King's still in, mm-hmm. an open white supremacist. Right. Uh, Trump, a, a white supremacist, still in office. So they don't care about that. But then we also have to deal with this guy. Right. Well, look, it, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. When a white person's not racist, then I'm shocked. What? Yeah. Right I'm here. Shocked. Right here. Hundred yeah. percent. You're not racist. Shocked me. Oh, is that right? No kidding. Yeah. When white people aren't racist, shocks me. Mother Time Podcast. Not racist. Not racist. I was gonna. Uh, anything else you want to say about Mister Northam? Uh, no, not at all. It's it's a. I was thinking about that. I was like, I'm looking forward to talking about this. As messed up as it is. Right. And thank God I was here so that we can talk about it. Yeah. We could get we could get the African American perspective on this. Yeah, well, that's why uh, you know the more diverse the show is, the more better it is. Yeah, I, I but understand. at the same time, he doesn't bother me that much. What he did is stupid. Mm-hmm. His excuses are stupid. He is a racist. I don't believe he's hateful, but you know he definitely needs to step down. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's you, completely ridiculous. <laughs> Meanwhile, the uh, lieutenant governor, you know the mm-hmm. the young uh, African American guy is like. <laughs> He's like, can you just fucking step down so I can, so you know it's going to happen. Up. Exactly. So I can step up. But now they're trying to pull some bullshit on him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, but um, Washington Post already investigated that and found no cooperators to anything whatsoever mm-hmm. on him. So, Right, what Mel's saying is someone someone tried to drop a, uh, a sort of a sexual harassment story right. that, that looks, it, it, the timing is highly suspicious. Right, on the lieutenant governor, but instead... Yeah. You know, he didn't do it. He said he didn't do it. But at the same time, look at everybody did something. Um, so a lot, a lot happened last week. Uh, first of all, Trump uh, pulled us out of the, the INF treaty. Right. So what? his boy Putin could come up with new missiles. Right. Now let me ask you. the treaty. I wasn't super familiar with Did you know what this treaty was? Because I'm not going to lie. I was... This was not something I was super familiar with. Yeah, so that they won't uh, do the intercontinental missiles and stuff and everything and blow each other up. So they were limited to what type of missiles that they can uh, make. Right. This was a treaty that Reagan and uh, I guess Gorbachev. Right. And it was a treaty about land missiles. So it was, but the point is, is that sure it had its flaws and yes, Russia has violated this once or twice, but it was something. It was important. Right. It's a way to not kill each other. That's the whole point. It's like. So for reasons unknown that, of course, are known, he's now, he just got rid of it. Right. By the way, there's actually a debate about whether a president can just pull out of treaties. Uh, This is way too complicated to get into now, but it's never been decided by the courts. That That a president can pull out of a treaty? Right. It's just, it's happening. Well, now everything's being tested. Of course. So. So I, I, I don't know, what's the purpose of this, to have more nuclear weapons? Like. I mean, at what point do we just acknowledge that he's just doing what Putin asked him to do? Oh, no, absolutely he's doing what Putin asked him to do. Because like the next day or whatever, Putin was like, we're going to start building up our missiles. Right, no, exactly. He's been waiting for that. That's We have no idea why Putin put Trump in there. Yeah. Maybe it was for this. Don't know. You know, it's funny. I was, We'll find out eventually. I, was, I wanted to see how, I, I mean, this sounds crazy, but a lot of ideas that start off good are crazy. I wanted to see... If I could send, I'm not, I'm not making this up. If I could contact Putin and just say, like, just I would be upfront, like, this is the show we do, and be like, look, man to man, can you just be like, I did What's it, up? I did it, and I'm like, this is funny. So I go online. Right. Do you know that if you want to contact, this is fucking hilarious. If you want to contact Vladimir Putin, mm-hmm. there's a website that you have to like fucking like register. Okay. Of course. Right. They're gonna fucking hack you, take all your shit. Right. It's not a normal thing, like even on our White House. They clearly want to know everything about you. Yeah. Okay. It's, I mean, it's very upfront. It's like, and it even says this can be used in any way we want. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, no, of course. But the, our government's doing the same thing. So I just gave him your name. Thank you. Yeah. It's like Mel Jones. <laughs> Mel oh. Jones. <laughs> Mel Jones did it. Mel yeah. Jones. Yeah, we do the same thing. 
So the New York Times dropped uh, a big story about Trump. He needed cash, liquid cash from Deutsche Bank. Right, his favorite bank. And they turned him down. (laughs) Because it's getting too hot. Mueller is all over them guys. Well, this was actually, so this one was right in the, it was the heat of the ca- campaign. I don't I don't even know if he got the nomination at that point. Right. And he applied for a loan and it went all the way to the top and they said no. Mm-hmm. It's a really interesting story. Well, now the, uh, now they're being investigated because apparently they got, what, a hundred million dollars for his inauguration. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't know where the money came from, how it was used or where it went. Yeah. We're going to, um, I had to throw that on last minute. We're going to, we're going to do that. Uh, it was just this, what was weird about this Deutsche Bank thing was that, you know, you say you're a billionaire, Mm -hmm. but yet you needed this loan right in the beginning of the campaign. And what was most interesting was that Deutsche Bank, the reason they gave that they didn't want to give the money was that they were like, if this guy wins, we can't get the money back. Right. Cause he's the president. Which I just thought was interesting. Right. I found that very interesting too, that they can't, if he decides not to pay, can they just punk the president of the United States and be like, nah, homie, give us our money. Yeah. They probably can't. So, and this one too, there's this, there's this other woman that this is not a name I heard, but her name's Rosemary Vrablik. And apparently while most of Deutsche Bank was saying, we can't give this alone, this woman kept pulling for him. So this has to be a name on someone's radar. Why? Right. Why, why does she keep pushing for him? And check this out. So it goes all the way to this top of this committee in Germany. And apparently they didn't even realize how much money Trump, they said they were shocked, like the senior people. They don't know where their money is. Wow. According to this article. They were okay. like, he, he has how much of our money? <laughs> I'm like, what kind of bank are you running here? So somebody on the inside there is definitely hooking him up. The, you know, I hadn't thought about it until you said it, but you're right. Yeah. Somebody on the inside. He's got someone on the inside definitely hooking him up. Or the Russians have somebody on the inside that he can go to that's been hooking him up. Because they've been laundering tons of money for Trump. My main thing is like, how are you a billionaire, but all of a sudden you need this cash infusion? Billionaires need money too. Yeah. (laughs) What a crazy story. No, that's insane. But I tell you, Deutsche Bank, they're all in this. Um, We also found out that (laughs) <laughs> it's like I'm trying not to laugh, but Trump uh, has been getting intelligence briefings. And mm-hmm. then when he does, he doesn't always even show up. Right. But when he does show up, he's out to lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eating the Big Mac. That was, did you see that that one? Yeah. But he, he they first of all, they really didn't even want to show him the uh, intelligence briefings. But, you know, they have to because he's the president. But he doesn't read them. Listen to this dude. So this was fucking hilarious. He mm-hmm. got a briefing about, they, they were talking about some place near near England where it's like an island where we have some kind of joint missile thing. It's, okay. it's like, it's secret. All right. So they asked this guy, have you ever read of Mice and Men? Mm-hmm. Because this, this guy is fucking Lenny. <laughs> He's literally, these are the two questions he asked after finding out about this secret base. Okay. Are the people nice? Are the beaches good? Wow. Th- this is literally fucking Lenny. Yes, George. Mm-hmm. You know, well, yeah, when we get there, I mean. Yeah, it's going to be nice beaches. It's going to be beautiful, yeah. It's going to be beautiful. They're going to like you there. Either that or like fucking like Simple Jack from. Uh, he Tropic- is simple. Here's something. <laughs> Here's something. God damn it, this man. So I usually don't listen to Trump. But I'd listen to Trump this weekend because I had friends in town and they love CNN. So we were CNN all day long really? and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I made two friends. Yeah. So, yeah. So now we're watching CNN and I actually had to listen to Trump give several interviews. The man has a super limited vocabulary. <laughs> Don't believe he has over, what, a fourth grade vocabulary. It's really weird. It's super strange to me. You sit there and listen to the president. I had a party. It was really, really nice. Yes, there were lots of people. Lots of people like me. Yeah. It was a great party. Now, you know, sometimes I got to leave my parties early or whatever because I'm busy. But lots of people like me and they come to my parties and we have a good time. So weird. That dude is so weird. Your friends are from Chicago. Yes. And I'm guessing they're probably not big fans of his. No. He's the one who chose Chicago. Chicago is the go-to now 
for for right wing racists. Whenever they want to use a code word, they say, yeah, Chicago. Wow. I yeah. didn't even realize that. It is. Well, when they talk about violence, uh-huh. they always pick Chicago. Right. Oh, that Chicago violence thing is insane. Yeah. I found out that there was a uh, train that was that had uh, arms in it, and assault rifles and everything mm-hmm. that was going through the inner city. And for some reason, it broke down. Really? In the inner city. And then when they finally right. got the train back on the tracks... Only one cart was gone, the one with all the guns. Wait, wasn't that like a John Carpenter movie? Yeah. That sounds like that, like Assault <laughs> on Precinct. It does. It sounds like some crazy New York insane movie. But I, yeah, I know Chicago has its troubles, but you never heard Republicans mention Chicago until it was like two years ago. And all of a sudden it's this Chicago, this. Chicago, Chicago, It's like we get Chicago. it. Chicago, right. We, we know what you're saying, like we get it. Mm-hmm. And also because Chicago traditionally is rum, is a, has Democratic mayors, so they use it to try to slam Democrats. right. Oh, and they love that they got uh, our boy Ralph North, uh, Northam because he's a Democrat. So now they're trying to bring that up and just drag him through the mud <laughs> with his little black face on. Uh, you brought up the inauguration. That mm-hmm. literally just broke. Mm-hmm. But do you want to uh, el- elaborate on that a little? Or Well, yeah. So what's happened is that, um, was it uh, was it Roger Ailes? No, it was, um, it was in Stone. But they, uh, the committee, they were going, they were getting money right, from all these foreign investors. Right. The inauguration committee, um, what Mel's talking about, collected $107 million. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you saw, did you see what Obama's inauguration cost? Uh, they said it was half that. Right. And, uh, and Obama was, Obama's was expensive that by, by standards. And he had top notch, everybody was there. Right. Exactly. Every, every important person in the fucking world was there. So Trump has the fucking worst. I mean, you remember that. It was terrible. There was nobody there. Oh, no, there was nobody. He was even surprised that he won. It was horrible. So It looked like he was in a basement somewhere. So, yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. today we found out that the the federal court in New York has subpoenaed everything. They want, they want to know where the money went, who gave the money. Right. This is going to go on way beyond Mueller. That's uh, what they're saying now. This is going to be huge. A lot of people are going to go down because of this. The key thing, what they're looking for, I'm sorry, we can say Trump's going to have to remain president for the rest of his life. <laughs> no, that's, it's true. The only thing protecting him is he's got to stay in there. He's got to remain president. As soon as he's not president anymore, the, handcuffs. That's why he's, that's why he's going at it so hard. Like, I don't think a lot of people realize that that's the only well, thing. I don't know how hard he's going at it. 60% of his time yeah, is we'll get, executive we'll, time. We'll get to that. <laughs> but so the money, the main thing they're looking for with this money is, that foreign foreign uh, people gave them gave them money, right? Which is illegal, right? Which is illegal. In fact, there was one time where Rick Gates, who's you know under indictment, uh, who's a, oh, excuse me, who's a cooperator, Rick Gates, who worked with Manafort, was telling people just to give money directly to the vendors, which is un- unusual. That's right. not done. You right. Give it to the committee fund. So, that's a very big story. Oh, yeah, no, that's not going to go away. But there's so many big stories. 107. 107 million. Look, there'll be a bigger story tomorrow. I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on this, but did you see the CNN block number story? Yeah, I, I, I saw that. They're, Mueller's going to investigate. So, They're going to find out. Right. The block number that Don Jr. said that everyone thought he called Trump, CNN says he called somebody else. I don't think this is a big deal because, first of all, these guys are all guilty anyway. Right. But... I'm not I'm not tripping off that. I just did want to bring it up. You just wanted to mention that we're aware. <laughs> so he called some other shady bastard. So what? Yeah. No, they're all, he's been calling shady people all along. Let, let me ask you this. Uh-huh. It's very possible that let's say he did make a call. Are you telling me his father he couldn't call some guy who's his father's in the room and just takes the phone away from him? That's it could that could happen too. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I'm hand, hanging out with you. Mm-hmm, hand phone handoff. The meeting happened in one floor below his dad's office in his dad's building. Right. He was down there. <laughs> hey, it's dad. hilarious. Hey, dad, I got Putin on the phone for you. Okay. Here. <laughs> um, okay. You, you brought up Trump's uh, work ethic. Right. 60% of his time on the toilet tweeting <laughs> so and eating McDonald's. Axios, who, I don't know if did you ever read Axios. No, I don't read Axios. It's a newer thing. It's kind of like, I'm a little bit, uh, Axios, I think, is, uh, let me just say, I, 
I think they're trying their best, but it's kind of like this, they're doing this kind of Cliff's Notes thing about the news that you have to see the site to see it, but they have very limited info. And then if you want, you can expand it, whatever. Okay. So the point of the Axios story is that Axios got Trump's schedules. Right. Nobody has From an intern. Probably. Or just somebody who thinks. Somebody that hates Trump. So Trump all day spent 60% of his day doing nothing. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, by the way, that doesn't surprise me at all. It's not 60, by the way. It's going to be 80. 60 is what the schedule says. So I know people like him. I know the motherfucker doesn't show up for at least one or two things. Right. And then he's checked out anyway. So if that says 60, it's more like 80. Right. Yeah. Because even the meetings he go to, he's not really there anyway. If you just stood in a room by yourself and stood there and breathed, you'd be working harder. Than Trump. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean... I was laughing, but then you're also kind of like crying because you're like, this is our president. I mean, I looked at one and when he does start a day, it's at what, like noon? Yeah. No, he starts at like 11. He's kicking it. He's chilling. You know, here's the thing with me. (laughs) Honestly, I've always wondered why. Why did he decide to become president? He's a billionaire, dude. Chill. You're living a good life. Now look at you. You're about to go to jail. All your family business is out there. It's only going to get worse. He should have never, ever done this. And I want to speak to the rest of you billionaires out there. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just because you made a lot of money doesn't mean that you could run the country. I remember what I was going to tell you before. He, the definition of white privilege, in fact, Tony Heasy Coates wrote that article, The First White President, which is brilliant. And that's about, that's who he is. He's the first white president, specifically elected for that reason, as a backlash. Can you imagine if Barack Obama, they found out he spent 60% of his day? And look, we've talked about this often. Me and my friends talk about this often. You can't compare Obama to Trump at all because Trump has gotten away with so much and Obama couldn't have done one of the millions of things that Trump has done. Not one. It's fascinating to me because one guy had to, Obama had to lead the perfect life. Perfect. Like the Olympian life. No mistakes. Perfect life. Right. And then Captain like Bozo it comes falling in, sloppy, can't read, can't speak. Um not even a real billionaire. No. The whole the whole thing the whole reason he was able to get away with that was that his dad gave him five hundred million dollars throughout mm-hmm. his life. That's right. If that hadn't happened, you he would just be he would have been selling cars along Route Three in New Jersey. Maybe. 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 Salesman of the month. Probably. Um, he doesn't seem to be too good at negotiating. He didn't get that wall. You know, I was going to ask you something. So tomorrow's going to be the State of the Union. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to listen to his part. <laughs> I'm not. I can't stand listening to him. No, that's that's your... And then I heard him, like I said, because my friends were watching CNN, mm-hmm. and it was ridiculous. I'm I'm just floored. I'm a little surprised. I want to know what you think. Pelosi got a lot of credit for the way she played him, uh, in you know, in, during the shutdown. Mm-hmm. But why did she give him the State of the Union now? I, I don't get that. Because that was his uh, gift for opening the government back up. I almost feel like that wasn't a great idea because he can still three weeks from now, right? Mm-hmm. He, he can, can shut still, down the government again. I just hope she got something else from him besides just doing like his job. We'll see. You think, yeah? We'll see what happens. I don't think he's going to shut down the government again. A little punk. Mm-mm. Even Fox News didn't like that. I don't think he's going to shut it down again. He does whatever Fox News says. I'm going to do my own. I'm going to do the Mueller time response, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I took a, took a little time off tomorrow, and I'm going to watch that thing, and I'm going to load up the camera and just go off. Wow. That's been one of the most fun things about doing this is, you know, I make these little videos sometimes. and Okay. It's fun, dude. It's like <laughs> it's like a Howard Beale from right. that movie network. The Mueller time response. Yeah, the Mueller. The that's Mueller right. time response. If, if Bernie can do it, you can do it. Uh, there's a fascinating story in the Atlantic by Natasha Bertrand. I don't. Did you get a chance to no. see it? Yeah, it's a. It was. It was a big one. Part. Um, part of the Mueller investigation is he indicted a company called Concord Management, who was part of the hack. Okay. And yeah, I tried to send it to you, but I know it's like a busy day. Yeah. It was a lot going on today. So 
for Concord management basically is based in Russia. So for some reason, they decided, no one else, none of the other indicted companies did this. They decided to fight the charges, which they're allowed to do. Okay. So they hired an American lawyer and got going. So, but it was weird. But of course, Mueller knew what was up. Because this, we didn't, I, did, I never even heard of this. Okay. The whole reason that they did that was so during the process of discovery where the, you have to give your evidence to the other, you know, to the defense. Right. They took that shit and gave it to Russian intelligence who then put it on the, it's on the fucking internet right now, along with fake documents to try to hurt Mueller. Wow. They took it, yeah. They took it and just married it up with fake shit. And they put it out there, but I guess, according to the article, Mueller knew that was coming, so he had already asked for a a gag order. He can hurt those lawyers, I guess, the American lawyers. Right. And I'm sure he, this wasn't mentioned, but I'm sure he was able to not, maybe not give them. all All the real stuff, all the juicy stuff. Give them just enough. And they said from, so it's a really interesting article. Uh, this is apparently what Russia does. I mean, they just fuck with everything. Mm-hmm. There's nothing those, There's nothing that Putin does that's just straight up. Nothing. Like scams that you never even heard of. <laughs> uh, Who would ever even think of that? Look, at, it's people pulling scams all the time. So they said that now for the rest of this trial, mm-hmm. if Concord Management wants any documents, they literally have to go to a room. Mueller's people will open up but, a book, read that shit. And right. remember it. That's literally what it is. Remember <laughs> they have that to remember shit. Remember it. Like your the guy from Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> so, so awesome. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> that lawyer's gonna be in court. You're like he's like I don't remember. He's like I don't remember this. Can I see that piece of paper again? Nah, hell no. Hell you had, no. You had your chance. You you saw it. That's crazy. See, That's well, insane. That was a, it's a great article, man. It was cool. I didn't even know that the Russians did stuff like that. That was pretty wild. The Daily Beast. Um, so it turns out the the, the NRA's David Keene, he's a president of the NRA. Right. He tried to meet personally with Putin. Of course he did. Of course he did. I mean, it's like I knew the NRA was in with them, but I didn't know that that happened. Dude, the NRA has been in on it forever. Why would the Why would you want to meet with Putin? I'm just speculating. Like, what What do you think? Who knows? I I have no idea. Who knows what's going on back there? Roger Stone has been running this whole Republican thing for so long, I just realized that he's been the dirt all this time behind the Republican Party. You think so? Yeah. I think he's been the dirt the entire time behind the Republican Party. Yeah, well, he's... And uh, without him, Democrats could have won the presidency quite a few more times. Yeah, he's been talking a big, uh, a big thing, but we'll see. He's been the mastermind the whole time behind all the Republican dirty dirty tricks and stuff. I think he's one, definitely one of the players, and for for this whole thing, he may have been the mastermind. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one that um, got Gary Hart. Oh, you think you think like, mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. yeah. I think Roger Stone's been behind a lot of stuff that's been going down. Uh, on a positive note, I want to say that the uh, looks like the 2020 candidates are going to be the best that yeah. we've ever seen. Yeah, we do have a lot of great 2020 candidates, except for our guy from uh, Starbucks. Oh. Oh, you know, it's funny. I mean, it's not that funny, but I sent that to you. So the Russians are starting to roll out their right. propaganda. Blacks for Schultz. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. you. I saw that. That's that's ridiculous. I really? Because I heard you were. I was, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm one of the Blacks for Schultz. Yeah. Not. <laughs> that, yeah, down down there in South LA, Blacks for Schultz is huge. Blacks man. for Schultz, it's oh. a big thing. Look at, like I said earlier, billionaires need not apply. We don't need you trying to run our government. We don't need free Starbucks. This crop of candidates, though, man, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, Cory Corey Booker, Booker, great video. Mm-hmm. Who else? Who else has announced? Uh, we still have uh, Pocahontas. She's still in. Oh, Elizabeth Warren. And Elizabeth Warren is oh, still in. It's a little mean, isn't it? <laughs> we have. You don't. You don't like Elizabeth Warren? <laughs> that whole Pocahontas thing. She's gonna have to live that for the rest of her life, dude. That was just a big snafu. She shouldn't have let that happen. Oh, we got Tulsi from uh, Hawaii. Tulsi Gabbard. You, you seen her? Fire. She's yeah, hot, but not, she doesn't believe in gay marriage, though. Yeah, she. So, She's oh, also, well. um, wah, wah, wah. the Russians seem to like her, which is kind of a flag, you know? Maybe. For the, for the, they, they tend to like these fringe candidates. We'll see. Um, 
We'll see. They'll probably, I think eventually, maybe somebody will pull her in as a vice president candidate. She's not going to make it all the way, though. No. She's not going to get close. She'll be one of the first to go down. But at least she'll be good to look at on TV. This is going to be the the, uh, best (laughs) crime. Here come the emails now. That was yeah. that was Mel. That that's uh, Mel. I said that. I keep it pro. <laughs> She'll be good to look at on TV. Um, there's Eric Swalwell is going to run. I really like him. He's mm-hmm. from Northern California. He hasn't announced yet, but he will. Okay. Um, I just I'm just very excited. I think literally it's one of those good problems. As yeah, that we're going to have so many good people. It's going to be awesome. And I like you know about Cory Booker. I actually, I, I like Cory Booker a lot. I, I do need to read a little more about his record. Um, but I certainly think he's a very capable candidate. And he's a very, I didn't say it on the show, but there's a documentary called Street Fight. It's about Cory Booker's first run for office. And wow. it's, it's a must watch. Okay. It's Cory Booker versus Sharp James, who was like the mayor of Newark. Okay. Who was like the most ultimate like power player. And the shit that happens in that movie is unbelievable. Wow. Okay. I'm going to check that out. It's like full on. This guy, Sharp James, pulls out every trick. Wow. Jackhammering right outside Cory Booker's office, like all day. The fucking ripping up the sidewalks. Damn. Um, really good stuff. Okay. I'm going to check that out. So, for right now, of everybody running, of course, I still like Kamala Harris. And that's probably oh, yeah. who I'm going to stick with all the way down to the bitter end. I like her too. Unless somebody else comes out of the blue, like Jesus. Or Muhammad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think Muhammad could run here, but. I like Kamala Harris because she, she's tough and. She's smart. And that too, of course. She's quick with it. She's smart. And that's what I appreciate. She knows exactly what's up. See, Trump's not going to be running because that's another fallacy. I don't care what anybody says, but whoever runs might be as almost as much of a dirtbag and they're going to need to fight. I don't know, dude. I you After think- Trump won, I. I all all bets are off. I don't know anything could happen. Anything could happen. Yeah. Anything could happen. I have no idea. The Russians going to have a new game jumping off. So we don't know what that's going to be all about. Yeah. You know, they might pull out some somebody's sex tape or something. They might make up a sex tape or whatever. We have zero idea of what their next strategy is. Um I hate to bring this up, but I kind of do. The um there's another report out on the the migrant children. Um, and yeah. as, as, um, unfortunately not fun is to talk about it. You know, it's some I feel is important on this show. The ACLU is suing Trump and now they're saying in court yesterday or two days ago, they said that they don't have the capabilities to reunite these kids, which is bullshit. So that's the Trump. And now that's what it's come down to. That they don't have the capabilities, but he the, wants $5 billion for a wall. Exactly. But so he can't the, hire more people. So that they could put the kids together. So it's just something that we all have to keep talking about in a public forum like this show or whatever. Right, exactly. We have to let them know the kids are still in trouble down there. He still wants money for a wall when we need that money for other resources to help reunite families, to bring in more judges down there so we can get people passed, to put better housing down there, better facilities to house the kids, better facilities to house the parents. There's we no, need all yeah. of that DNA testing labs right there on the spot. That's what I'm saying. How can you not say that you you can't reunite them? What are you talking about? There's there's no place to hide on this earth anymore for anybody. You can be found. Right. If somebody if the government wants you. If they want you, they can find you. So how how are they going to say that they can't reunite them? It's sad what's going on down there. It's really a tragedy. These it's really some documents leaked about that, and apparently what they're saying is is that. If you read between the lines or even if you don't, the intention from the beginning was to hurt these kids because they, as a deterrent, that's how right. sick this shit is. Yeah, no, no. I, I picked up on that so, immediately. Yeah. Right. That's that really sick. Been, right. It, but he doesn't care, just like he used all the government workers also yeah. and just shut down the government. I want a wall. I want a wall. Shut down the government. Boom. People are starving, going there. Now they're losing their dignity, showing up at uh, food banks and stuff. You know, people are proud. Yeah. People don't want to have, they get, they have a good job. They work 40 hours and now they got to go to a food bank. They got to tell their kids, sorry, we got to go to a food bank because we don't have enough money because the government shut down. Well, why did the government shut down? 
because the president wants to build a wall. Some Nazi stuff right there. Yeah, that's insane. That's some straight up. That's insane. And a wall stops nothing. No, of course not. And then in, um, there's no joke here I can make, but Ronnie Jackson was promoted. Remember him? Oh, my God. The president's doctor. Yeah. Ronnie, all of a sudden, I forgot about this guy. Trump I did, just, too. He promoted Ronnie Jackson mm-hmm. to, like, a higher level of admirable, ad, excuse me, admirable, admiral. <laughs> admiral. Into, like, the, now he's, like, a higher up doctor. Right, he's almost a surgeon general. The fuck? <laughs> he's almost Wait. a surgeon general. Ronnie Jackson was fired. Or I thought he was fired. Right, I did too. Not just he for, falsified the information about Trump. Well, but I I don't even think I don't remember if they even that was part of it because how how bad it was. But right. most of it was for a hostile work environment. They said he's like harasses people and for um mostly for prescribing pills. Wow. To people who don't. Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly. crazy. Look, it Trump is always up to no good. He's hiring more people to just to uh, create more of a swamp. Yeah. Look at what he's doing over with uh, what the uh, EPA. Did he put someone in over there? Yeah, he's putting people in over there. Trump is out of control. <laughs> this man is out of control. He's just swinging Big Macs around, throwing them wherever they stick. I, I, I really can't stand this guy. Yeah. But he makes for great television. But... And, and like I said, all the time, it would be funny and we would be able to sit back and kind of laugh, but this border situation yeah. pisses me off to no end. Yeah, so as much as I like, tomorrow we will watch the State of the Union. Or, I mean, You'll watch I'll the State watch of the Union. I'll watch um, the recaps. I'll watch the Mueller time recap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, ordinarily I wouldn't watch it, but I do. I, I think I'm going to watch it maybe for a little bit of the car wreck aspect. Right. You know, you got to figure all the other news announcers on television must feel the same way. They yeah. must just hate coming to work every day like, God damn, this Trump. So I think like Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is bringing, you know, she's bringing as her guest. Because that's part of the thing. The thing right, that you get to bring guests. You get, and you always, a lot of times it's a political statement. So mm-hmm. apparently she's bringing one of the women, an undocumented immigrant who was working at one of Trump's clubs that he fired. when he, Right. So he's, 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 she's bringing her. Yeah. And you know what Melania's bringing? This is fucking true. Uh-oh. I swear to God. Wait, what? You're going to love this. Okay. And no, it's not a secret boyfriend. That would be funny though. That would be great. Melania Trump, and again, I'm not making this up. She's bringing some random fucking kid whose last name happens to be Trump who gets bullied at school. Wow. Just Trump. Wow. <laughs> I know. Well, maybe if her husband wasn't such a dick, then yeah. this little boy with the last name of Trump wouldn't be getting bullied. And this is like some like next level, am I in a simulation type type stuff. Dude, this shit is crazy. This shit gets crazier and crazier all the time. You yeah. can't make this shit up. Watching it as a TV show in the future is going to be unbelievable. People are going to think this shit is made up. Yeah. It's so stupid. We're going to watch it and probably stop watching it. I thought at one time it was going to be the greatest show ever, but it might be so stupid that I'll just have to turn it off and say, I know it's true, but I can't watch it because it's just so stupid. Anything else you want to uh, tell the people today? Uh, No. Please get down there to the border. Help as much as you can. If you're rich and got free time and think you could change the world, then go down to the border. That's your first stop. Schultz, listen up. Go to the border. Help. Don't run for president. That's a great point. Use your money. Yeah, Use help Use your people. money. Go down to the border. Help. If you want to follow us, we're on uh, Twitter at Muller Time Pod, Facebook, Muller Time Podcast, Instagram. Uh, our email is Muller Time Podcast at Gmail. And the Patreon is Muller Time Podcast. Excuse me. Patreon.com backslash Muller time. Uh, two things. Um, one, the email that I have is always available if somebody wants to reach out for any reason. Uh, and another thing too, we are always looking for people who want to come on the show. A local is, is better, but if this is your jam, your comedian, you're just somebody who knows about the news, you're good at this. An actor, you, an actress, actor. John Cusack. Yep. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, John we're Cusack. Look, we're re- looking at you, John Cusack. John Cusack reached out to us, which is very cool. But but um, famous or not, if you think that this is something you'd be good at, you can hit me up at the Muller Time Podcast at Gmail. Yeah, come on, shoot the stuff with us. Um, Talk to us about this crazy man. We've had famous people on the show. I don't personally care if someone's famous or not. I care if they're good at at this. I just care if they're concerned. And I that, just want all concerned Americans to be heard. No, I just care if they're good. But no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not caring is. Yeah, I just want all concerned Americans to be heard. If you have something on your chest that you feel that we all need to hear and that we've been missing, just like you know, why why now do we have this you know going on with Ralph Northam right now? Yeah. The yearbook is from 1984. He's been governor for a while now. Yeah. Like, why? Why is this happening today? So if you're out there and you see something that we've missed and you feel that you could contribute, please come by, see us. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Mm-hmm.